Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justification. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Application Development Today. My name is Don Jackson. I'm a chief technologist here at OpenText. I'm also your host, and I'm pleased to have with me today, Mr. Mike Bolte. Mike, if you want to introduce yourself. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate you having me on. So I'm Mike Bolte. I'm the Regional Vice President of Business Value Consulting. Uh, and that's made up of two teams here at OpenText. It's our solution architecture team and our value engineering team. Uh, been with OpenText for 25 years, and I actually was an original hire of the company back in 98, believe it or not. So I'm kind of one of those OpenText unicorns. Wow. Well, uh, I appreciate you, you taking the time out of your, I, I know we had trouble scheduling this, so out of your busy schedule, and I, I really do appreciate it. So today's topic is uh, ROI, or return on investment, and TCO, or total cost of ownership, or as I like to call them, the wonder twins of building Meanwhile, a business case. At the Hall so, of Justice. Do you guys hear that? I hear something, some weird sound. What is that? Oh my gosh, it's my sister. Wonder Twin Powers, activate. <laughs> You'll form uh, Gina to run you through the finish line, and I'll form a sheet of ice so that you can uh, slide through, even if they throw curveballs at you. Oh, uh, thanks, uh, thanks, sis, for for coming in and 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 joining us Meanwhile, today. Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justification. So I hope you guys appreciate the little the little funny. You know, uh, we'll we'll also have some some funny. Meanwhile, you know, at the Hall of Justification. Of justification. So, uh, <laughs> for those of you who don't remember the uh, the TV show back in the what is it early '80s, probably. Um, um, maybe we can get you know Gleek out there too. I don't know, but. Um, <laughs> So, uh, so Mike, uh, if, if you could kind of talk to us about what do you feel are kind of the key attributes of, of TCO and ROI? Uh, by the way, um, uh, in case I didn't mention it earlier, um, if you don't define your acronyms, you'll get a little warning message that's popped up afterwards. DYA, it's define your acronym. So if, if you use an acronym, Perfect. just make sure you please define it. Uh, so Absolutely. It. So what are the key attributes of of TCO and, and ROI? Well, so I guess the first thing we do is we start by defining what each of those are. So let's start with ROI or return on investment. Um, and return on investment is a very common kind of performance metric or measurement that companies use uh, when they talk about a business justification. Um, and to not get into kind of the deep finance definition or calculation, let's keep it pretty simple. Um, and I like to keep it simple as by saying just simply it's what do I put in versus what do I get out? So again, what is the investment relative to the, um, to the, what is the measurable benefit relative to the cost, right? So again, what am I putting in? Cost, what do I get out? The benefit. And that's what people are looking to measure when they talk about return on investment. Now TCO on the other hand, or total cost of ownership is the, what do they have to put in? So what does the company need to invest over the period of time um, to give them a total economic picture of what it's going to cost them for that solution. So that's where your TCO comes in. So they very much tie together, um, TCO being the foundation on cost. And then ROI brings into account the benefit. What am I getting out of it um, on the backside? So if I make the investment, what do I get in return? Make sense? Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. So, and and this could be any kind of proposal that you have for your organization too. It doesn't have to be acquiring software, which is where we we fit in. It could be any kind of proposal you have. Understanding the total cost of ownership of what your as is and your to be is uh, contributes to that. So, you know, you think about your total cost of ownership. Um, you know, I was a solution owner for the tools that that we sell uh, when I was a customer. So, total cost of ownership isn't just things like um, the uh, maintenance fee that you pay, right? There's also the uh, electricity that it takes to run the hardware. It's the hardware itself, procuring the hardware and the and the the uh, the um, the depreciation of of that asset. It's the labor that it takes to do that. It's the licenses for the operating system. It's the licenses for uh, the database instance, you know, if you have an yeah. Oracle database underneath that, you know, Oracle databases can be expensive. It's, you know, there's, there's all of these things in there as well. So 
um, I heard I heard you. I, I in fact I just finished it maybe 15 minutes ago. You had a session earlier this week uh, that you recorded where you talked about something R O X. So what is R O X, and how does that relate to R O I, and T C O and, and the like? So first of all, I don't know, you asked the question and my dogs went crazy. So it must have been a really good question to ask. So I apologize for the background noise. Um, so ROX, yeah. It, so first of all, let me back up on the, the total cost side. You, you nailed it. It's it's the all-in cost, right, that you just mentioned. Um, and if you take it out of even software terms, think about it as any organization um, and the, the cost to run a business, right? So if you're, uh, you're a manufacturing organization, your total costs get into your facilities, it's your people, it's your equipment, it's your maintenance, it's your supply chain costs. All of those things go into the overall TCO or total cost. So it's a really good way to look at it um, and think about it more holistically. Don't think about it in the small, it's this amount of money for the software or the maintenance. It's what is the all-in cost that you really want to project. Um, yep. Now ROX, um, and that's a that's probably something a lot of people have no idea what that means uh, if they haven't been around uh, talking value for a while. But the value equation that we use is the return on investment plus return on experience. So ROX is the return on experience side, um, and the the return on experience is so vitally important because it can be the one thing that can differentiate you from from your competitors. And what I mean by that is. The return on experience is leaning into and understanding the stakeholders or the sponsors actual challenges, their motivations, their goals, their objectives, more on a personal level. It doesn't have to be just the business goals and objectives. It can tie into the more personal side of the house. And so ROX is how do you take somebody that's a stakeholder that you're trying to get to buy something from you and turn them into a champion? Somebody that's championing your cause on your behalf within that customer base that you're trying to sell to. So it becomes a really interesting uh, way to think about that because when all other things are equal, that ROX can be the one determining factor that flips it in your favor. And that's why we don't ever want to lose sight of what ROX can mean. Right. So, I mean, one of the things that, that you talk about in there. Um, that I've always uh, countered as as something that needs to be calculated in your ROI is the uh, business differentiating work that so, that a team or a person will be able to now do that they weren't able to do in uh, in the old way of working, right? In the as is, you know, they're spending time uh, maintaining this solution or maintaining this this manual process that you're now trying to digitize, whatever your proposal is. But your, your team is spending time doing that. Well, when you free up that time, these smart people that you hired, hopefully you hired smart people at least, right? These smart people can now work on business differentiating capabilities that weren't there and aligning those to the strategic theme of the organization and to that champion or sponsor like you were talking about increases that return on experience that they're getting and uh, you can also start quantifying what those things are. So maybe that's a, an increased time to market of a new feature uh, that allows you to get ahead of your competitors, right? Well, yeah. or in that case, and a decreased time to market because we're increasing time to yeah, market. Sorry. That'd be the wrong yeah. way to go. No, I just, it, it's yeah. funny you say that because I catch myself doing that quite frequently as well, but you're spot on. Um, so when you think about quantifiable benefits uh, to an organization, one of the things that can be really difficult is efficiencies. I'm gaining some efficiencies. And, and a lot of times you can measure those, uh, but we have to be careful about what that measurement looks like. Um, so measuring overall benefits that go into your business case, your ROI, um, those are those quantifiable things that quite often we can measure using math. Right. So um, reduction in in uh, time to market or, you know, um, growth uh, within another market or a new product launch. What's that mean from a revenue perspective? Uh, if we're able to shut something off, take down a plant, a facility, a data center, uh, what is the cost associated with running those? And that's a decrease in cost, right? Either a fixed cost or a variable cost. All of those go into the calculation. Um, but when we start to talk about the things that are less quantifiable, the, the qualitative things, those are tougher to measure 
but mm -hmm. they're really important. So when I talked about those personal motivations and goals, um, how do you quantify that? You really can't. Uh, but if you can get somebody to champion you, and that helps them elevate themselves within their organization. So maybe they were um, currently a line manager, but by doing this project in a successful manner, they're now being a, a general manager. They've moved up into a director's role within their organization. That's a personal objective. That's a personal goal and gain that they're going to get. Um, it's not really necessarily quantifiable, uh, but it's really, really important. And then on the personal side that you mentioned, if we can free people's time up, and we can get them working on other things for the company, maybe we can then think about how do we measure that outcome? So we took five people that were used to do these manual, very repetitive tasks, and now they're working on something that's more important because we switched them over and they're working on a new product launch. And by doing that, we reduce our time to market by six months. So what's the revenue impact for the company in doing that? And now we could flip that into a benefit, an actual measurable uh, gain for the company from a revenue perspective. So it, it really is interesting how you can take some of these things that start off and seem really difficult to quantify, but when you spin it a little bit differently and look at it kind of from the customer's lens, it becomes more quantifiable and can fit into your business case actually rather easily. Yeah, yeah. and I think about, you know, you talk about qualitative measures as well. You think about some of the, uh, when we talk about freeing up resources, right? So a lot of what we do is, is digitizing something, right? Digitizing, you know, automating a process or, or you know, uh, uh, freeing up somebody. The quality of life, the quality of your job, right? The job satisfaction that that, that person gets instead of, you know, um, for for example, you know, in the, in the uh, uh, FDA validation space, right? The process mm -hmm. of physically signing something and it has to be in a specific thing and then you ship it to somebody else and it's somebody's job to track all of these pieces of paper going all over the place when you can digitize that that person whose job who like half of their time was spent where is this document now where is this document now let me retrieve this document like a phone call to get this document out of archive they're now able, able to do frankly anything else and their quality of life goes up, which means they're less likely to leave. My turnover rate goes down. You know, these are these are all uh, qualitative, difficult to quantitate uh, measures that that you can put in there. Do you have some other examples of of return on exp experience that you can sanitize uh, to protect the guilty or protect the innocent? Yeah, <laughs> protect the innocent. Yeah. Um, so we had a really interesting opportunity we worked on uh, a number of years ago, um, and it started off as a relatively simple type of an opportunity. Um, we got in, we engaged with the organization to find out you know, just what it was they were actually looking to achieve. Um, and as we started to have conversations with the stakeholder, the person that was in charge of the project, we quickly realized that they were using our solution in a very small way. Right. They, they kind of had a they had a really nice platform to do things on, but they're only using it in a really small, small manner. They could they could do a lot more. Um, so we started to dig in and ask them, you know, well, what are some of the other things that are initiatives that you have going on, projects that you have have going on as well? Um, and that particular person's like, well, you know, we have this this project going on over here and then I got that one going on over there and there's a third and fourth. And, you know, we're really busy because we just completed this big acquisition. We went, whoa. All right, well, you do realize that for a number of the things that you talked about, you already have a solution that could solve many of the challenges that you actually have. And that person kind of looked at us a little strange and went, yeah, but how much more is that going to cost? And we're like, we already own it. Yeah. You already own this. So the answer is, well, it just kind of depends on how much more, you know, users or how much more capacity you may need. But at the end of the day, you have the platform in place. And so as we started to have these conversations, we, we found out more, they, they engaged further. And ultimately, as we started to work through, we, we told the sales team, hey, listen, you've realized that deal that you're working on is really about 8X larger than what you're trying to sell. And I went, no way. <laughs> We're like, yeah, it actually is. And after we went through a, a few more sessions with the customer, we realized it, it really was 8X larger. And so we put a proposal in front of the customer and of course our champion, our 
the person we were trying to make a champion, uh, came back and went, there is no way we are spending that much money on this solution. I, I, there's no, we don't have the funding. Right. What's the ROI? So we actually worked with them on a business case uh, to show them the quantifiable benefits. But the bigger part of the picture was that person went from, and this is a, a true story. We actually have a write-up on this. That particular individual said, at the beginning of the opportunity, when we engaged with OpenText, you were a software vendor. By the time we got done and we actually signed the opportunity, you became a strategic partner and a trusted advisor. And that is a that is an ROX that you can now measure, right? We, we actually showed that we could increase the opportunity size eightfold because we engaged with them, we understood their challenges, we showed them we cared, and by the way, we solved a lot of problems for them that they didn't know they even that we could even do for them. Um, so ultimately, the re experience we got was not just the fact that we had a customer that expanded their usage with us, we changed the relationship entirely. They went from just, again, being a software vendor to a trusted partner and, and a um, with them or trusted advisor, if you will. And those people that we worked with on the project became champions. Internally, they were now advocating on our behalf, looking for other uh, projects that open text could be applied to, which was really even more interesting for us because that's kind of the gift that keeps on giving. That's any organization is looking for that advocacy. And that's one of those things that's somewhat difficult to quantify until it starts turning into additional right. revenue streams that you're not expecting. Yeah. So, so, you know, for those of us watching this, right. So whatever proposal you're putting out there, right. So understanding the strategic theme, understanding uh, what are the uh, uh, MBOs or managed by objective uh, for the for the person that you're trying to sell this idea to, right? So it doesn't have to be just selling something, selling software, right? You have this proposal. Maybe your proposal is, is you want to, you know, uh, uh, take over doing this particular function that you feel isn't being handled very well where it is today. Whatever that is, understanding the strategic themes of the company, understanding how what you're doing fits into that, understanding the full capabilities of, of what you're proposing uh, uh, is, is can reap benefits not just for this point, but in the future as well. So if you have a proposal and you really tie it to strategic theme and you help somebody achieve their MBO, the next time that that person is looking for somebody to work on a special project that's really interesting but high criticality to them, who are they going to go to, right? They're going to go to you because you understood that, right? So it's it's not just from a vendor and and uh, and customer perspective. Everybody everybody has to understand that you serve somebody, right? You have somebody that you're selling some idea to. You could be just selling yourself. You could be selling an idea of what you want to do, whatever that proposal is. But really understanding that. So um, we've talked uh, 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 somewhat too about you know things that people don't really think about, right? Um, are there are there any other topics that, that you can think of that would go into either TCO or ROI or ROX that uh, that we missed that maybe be ahas or gotchas that- Meanwhile, that, at the uh, hall of justification. Really someone should be thinking about what, with whatever proposal they're, they're trying to sell. Yeah, so I'm gonna maybe pull on a couple of things. I'm gonna start over on the ROI side because you actually just said something that, that really resonated as well. Um, and it got me thinking a little bit about something I typically talk with people about as it relates to alignment to business objective as a right alignment to strategic initiatives within an organization. Um, often, very often, I see people kind of get caught up in the ROI story and just want to focus in on the number, right? The number we get, we're going to tell them we got a 300% ROI, 400% ROI. Um, but I can tell you through experience, and we've seen this repeat itself time and time again, you could have the best business case in the world, 700% ROI. It doesn't mean somebody's going to buy. The business case alone doesn't mean anything. A number is just a number. What you need to do, and you said it so eloquently, is align to the business goals and objectives. There needs to be that alignment um, if you want that that business case, that ROI to resonate and actually hold true for the customer. Um, and I can tell you that anybody that's done value-based work will, will ultimately know 
if you want to get a project funded in, or you want to make sure your project is funded, then you need to be lying to the strategies of the company because that's where the investments are being made. Strategic mm -hmm. initiatives by the organizations are the places that things are being funded. So if you can align <clears throat> from even the project level to a strategic goal, that's where funding and sponsorship will be had by executives and the C-levels. And there's a C-level somewhere <clears throat> within an organization when there's an, a strategic initiative who has a measurable goal against it. So again, you had mentioned making sure you have that ROX piece. Well, that ROX at a strategic level is with a C-level, which yep. is even more important. So you're helping them meet their objectives that ultimately are going to lead to some sort of compensation uh, for their for them as well. So there's some ROX in that. Uh, on the ROX side, I think we've covered it actually in, in fair amount of detail. Um, it's all about trust. It's all about becoming your building champions, creating your 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 trusted advisor relationship with those organizations. I think the one thing we always need to keep in mind is we can't leave our customers behind. Um, so when we put together these ROIs and we develop that ROX, these experiences with these organizations, it's always good to come back and touch base on a frequent basis as well. And uh, one of the things that, that we do need to continue to work on is going back and understanding the value they have achieved. And that's, a, yep. that's another goal that we have that, that we're working on here at OpenText is what is the attainment? What did they get? And, yeah. and then let's, yeah. let's really champion that internally for them but also it's great for open text to understand with their customers uh what realization they've got based on on what we said they were going to get well mike i, I thoroughly enjoyed the conversation today i i uh, if you've watched some of the previous episodes you know i always give a closing time to to whoever the featured guest is so my question to you is what are mike's words of wisdom what are your m wows uh, it could be re topic relevant or, you know, you can go way off into left field if you want to, if you have some kind of uh, words of wisdom that you want to uh, leave it as a parting thought. Yeah. So there's a, I, I think that I'll leave with two things. Uh, there are two quotes that I've heard recently and that they, they kind of always resonate with me and they're, they're, they're on topic with this. So I think they kind of tie in nicely. Uh, the first one is helping will sell, selling won't help. So what do I mean by that? If you're helping an organization solve their business challenges, the sell will happen along the way. So concentrate on the customer, their challenges, and how you can help them make their improvements. And then the sale will happen. But when you're just trying to sell them something, you're not really helping them necessarily understand how it's gonna solve a problem. So I, I always try to make sure people that are in selling positions understand it's really you helping them solve challenges and problems that will lead to a sale. Um, it's always easier to sell something to someone that they want to buy. So if you got something mm -hmm. they want to buy, go sell them that. The other thing I always lean back on is uh, is a, a, a you know a, a person that everybody knows, and that's Warren Buffett. Um, and his quote that I love uh, so much is, you know, price is what you pay, value is what you get. So what I mean by that is when we focus on the value side. What is the ROI? What is the ROX? We add those things together and we get the value to the organization. Price starts to not matter. And, and I, I gave you that story earlier where it was this 8X growth uh, in the overall project cost, and it didn't matter. The company saw the value they were going to get, and that investment, even though much larger than they had budgeted for, still made economic sense to them. So the price really started to not matter. And it also does two other really important things. It reduces time um, that you're going to spend on opportunities when you when you focus on the value for the organization. And it also helps on discounts. Now, I don't want to get into being a seller right now, but again, we all sell. So I, I'm always cognizant of, of how the discounts apply. But if you can really show the value, like I said, that price becomes less important price always matters but it becomes a little less important when that value is there so those are the two quotes that i would leave you with and uh i do thank you for allowing me to come on the uh, podcast it's been great yeah so uh and keep in mind people um that uh, that are watching this you're always selling something to whoever is your customer right you may not be selling something that they have to fork over money but you're selling 
I, I want to spend more time on this on this idea. I have this proposal. I want to spend time on this. It means I'm not going to spend time on these other things. But here's the the benefit down the road, right? And and so it's not just about you know a, a true sale. So Mike, thank you so much for taking the time today. And uh, I hope you guys all enjoyed. This was our, our a special episode for us. This was uh, episode special, uh, regular episode number 20. So we're kind of excited about that one. As always, if you have additional ideas, you have questions about the topic, you can always email me directly. My email is djackson3, D-J-A-C-K-S-O-N-3 at opentext.com. And once again, Mike, thank you so much for taking the time today. Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justification. And you're on mute, so. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be better if I wasn't on mute. I'm a technologist. <laughs> Can you believe it or not? I couldn't find the mute button. No, I, I again, thank you so much for having me on the podcast. I, I enjoyed it. I hope people get a lot out of it or at least something out of it. Uh, and I guess to that vein, I hope it provided a little bit of value. So thank you. Appreciate it. Have a good one. If you like the video, please click the like button. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you get notified when we release new videos.